Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hi guys and welcome back to our new tour as we go back up to Scotland and this time we're going to visit the county of Argyll. Argyll, yes, great. So let's get packed and let's get going. Yeah. Come on. We've arrived at Firkin Point, which is just off the A82. Um, so this is Loch Lomond, obviously, and this is absolutely brilliant. So um, you can see where we're parked here, which is absolutely great. Um, the lock is just to the left. It's all motorhome parking down the bottom. It's nice and flat. Now in the summer, it appears that you need a permit but I looked everywhere at the moment and I can't find anywhere to purchase a permit so I'm guessing that in the winter it's free of charge but absolutely amazing yeah brilliant brilliant place to park um, there's a little information area here um, just telling you about Turkin Point just a little bit of history and there's some toilets um, I think they're locked at the moment but there is also some toilets, um, portaloo thingies down the bottom. There we go, lots of portaloos. Lots of people coming and going, walking dogs. Um, absolutely tremendous. Um, really, really, really brilliant place. A bit murky and miserable today, but hey, that's the way it goes. It's autumn, isn't it? Got to expect it. Okay, so down the bottom of the car park, we've got toilets, so portable portaloo toilet things um, they're okay by the look of it and there's a sign here that says motorhome permit area so between 7 a.m. 7 p.m. during these hours this car park is for camping or motorhome permit holders only so I'm guessing that's the bit down the bottom um, it probably gets really busy here in the summer I guess but um, there's bins as well plenty of bins and walking down towards the lock. Oh, picnic benches. That's great. Right by the parking area. 
and the bins and some information points by the look of it here as well yeah it just tells you um, where everything is I think yeah and some fire safety and wood safety advice good advice there because in the summer lots of trees around don't want anybody setting fire to anything accidentally so it says here that this caution deep water offshore close to offshore so be careful now there's a little beach down here um, by the look of it so I'm guess guessing this is where the people go swimming normally uh, water hazards are present so it's saying cold water sudden drop deep water yeah oh my god I don't think I'd want to be going in there today have a little look down here oh oh it is it's like a little beach area beautiful absolutely beautiful I know it's rainy it's winter isn't it or autumn so that's just the way that it is but this is absolutely stunning look at this I've got some um, Loch Lomond facts as well that I found on my phone so I'll, uh, I'll get those out afterwards and let you know what they are. I think it's, um, from what I can remember, the largest surface of water in the UK, Loch Lomond. But I will get that out and have a little read afterwards and let you know. Yeah, this is, this is fab. So whilst I'm sheltering under the trees for a minute, um, I'm going to show you this gorgeous view on the bonny bunny banks of Loch Lomond. And I'm just going to share with you some facts. So the loch is 36 kilometres long and up to eight kilometers wide and 0.2 kilometers deep. And it has a surface area of 71 kilometers. So it's actually um, the largest lake by surface area in Great Britain and second largest lake by volume in Great Britain after Loch Ness. So that's some interesting facts for you. Um, and believe it or not, I've just read that there's also meant to be a monster here as well. So eat your heart out Loch Ness. Um, there's been sightings of a beast resembling a plesiosaur or a large crocodile and these have been reported on several occasions. Get that one then. Yeah. Right. But um, this is the area that they say is really really good for swimming I'm guessing in the summer months. However when we came down earlier on there was a, a girl and a guy who had just been in the water. I don't know whether they're on um, YouTube that they were filming themselves um, but very brave they were blue blue and brave that's all I can say but yeah it kind of goes on just over here a little bit as well so really uh, really nice little area just a little bit more sheltered than the other areas as well this is where this is the bit that we came to So many people out in the rain. Gosh, if we were at home, everybody would be inside. But it seems in Scotland, it's like, oh, this is the weather, so out we come. And uh, yeah, here they all are, walking, doodling around. Yeah, this is the bit that we came to earlier on. I'm guessing there's probably other bits of beach around the lock, but this is the bit that's right by the side of the car park. I really like the idea that um, the national parks around here just really love the fact that people come and spend time here. I mean, it's just clear to see they put picnic benches everywhere, these bins everywhere. You know, they know people are going to come, so they just cater for them, which is really great. A little house right over there as well. Fancy living here. Absolutely stunning. I'll have a little walk over there now. More picnic benches. This is a great path as well. Um, from what I can gather, this runs both ways around the, the lock, probably a few miles long. Um, and it is absolutely great for walking. I mean, disabled access prams, anybody can walk along here. That's uh, brilliant. So I'm just walking down the path a little bit further now and I can see some houses. Fancy living here. I think the access for them is um, off the main A82, but there's a car here, so 
I'm guessing they've got access down this little road as well. Ooh, what a nice place to live. They've got their own boat access as well, look. Steps leading down into the lock. But underwater over there as well. So great for the summer. I can see some other places down here as well. So let's go and have a look what's down here. There's quite a few um, access to the lock. So there must be a couple of houses along this path. I can see another one coming up. It's actually quite choppy on the water. So it probably would be a bit dangerous to go swimming out very far, I would have thought. Oh, lovely. I think that's an acacia tree. Right, this looks like a little, oh. This looks like a little boathouse. You can see uh, wooden doors on the front. Let's go and have a look. All the ferns are all dying back now. Everything's dying back with the autumn coming along, winter coming along. And the little babbling brook. Rushing down off the mountains. Underneath the little parkway again and out the other side. Oh, this is really sweet. So I wonder how they get into the, their boats down into the water. Oh, little barbecue point outside in their own picnic bench. That's sweet. Oh. Here we go. There's their little access into the water straight opposite their gates. And a little, um, a little fire obviously inside as well because I can see their little chimney pot on the top. There's their boats. That is really nice. This is obviously their garden as well because it's all nicely kept. How lovely and a lovely house up here as well. All glass fronted. Exactly what you want for living uh, right by a lock. That's the thing that I would want in uh, the house if I was living here. Lots of glass so we could just sit there and stare out at nature's TV all day long. This looks like it's got um, a garden of some description with wooden gates on the front, maybe to park extra cars or something. Have a look. Yeah, parking, extra parking. But this is absolutely lovely. They've got their own landing. Oh, I, I guess that may be for boats then, because over here is another little area to take a boat down straight into the water. So that's obviously for their boats in the summer. And their own little jetty. Yeah, this is a nice jetty, isn't it? With their boat over there already on the little platform. Very nice. I don't think I'd ever watch the television if I lived somewhere like this. I think I'd be just staring out of the window all the time. Looks like the weather might be improving a little bit as well. I can see a bit of brightness creeping in over the far side of the lock over there. There are these little gates that are along the path as well, with signs on. And it's obviously, um, what does it say? Camping management, no camping here. So it obviously looks as though it's quite regulated, um, which is good. People know where they are. If they break the rules, then they break the rules and I guess they can be fined. I'm not gonna go any further down there at the moment. I'm just going to enjoy this little bit, I think. And a nice view of the mountains at the top there. I believe that this lock 
actually divides the highlands from the lowlands. So we're going to be uh, leaving here and going up into north a bit. So we're going to be hitting the mountains a bit more, which I'm looking forward to because I absolutely love views. It's my thing. I can sit and look at a view all day long. I just absolutely love it. I think the trees here are fabulous as well. That one's obviously blown right the way to the right because of the wind coming off the lock in the winter. So it's grown right the way across like an archway. It's lovely. I'm thinking that the wind must be howling around here in the winter because I don't know whether you can see there but these trees are all strapped down with like metal leashes so they must be trying to protect them but yeah they're all um, they're all held down with metal leashes <laughs> must belong to that house there with a super boat out on the jetty still yeah I can definitely see myself having a few parties in there for sure right let's go back to the van and get dry There's a fabulous pathway that runs all the way along the side of the lock. Well, I think it runs for about three miles. Um, it looks like it could be a driveway as well. I'll find out in a minute, but totally suitable for people walking with prams or wheelchairs or disabled access. It's fabulous. Um, it's very limited view today. Oh, so lovely. I can imagine what this looks like on a summer's day. It would be glorious, but it's not a summer's day. It's not a summer's day. Beautiful tree. I love trees. I've just found this little sign that says camping in the park. Um, it's a permit area and that camping from March to September requires a permit which can be bought online at www.locklomondtrussocks.org um, however I know that from my own research that I found this on search for sites so I know plenty of people in motorhomes stay here as well oh this is stunning look at this I know it's a cloudy day and I know it's a bit rainy but I mean just look at this super stunning view it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful.
So here are the signs in the car park that say about the motorhome permit area um, between 7pm and 7am. During these hours this parking area is for camping or motorhome permit use only. Um, I'm guessing that's summer, not winter. So here we are. And there's only, there's one other motorhome here now. But that's it. And to be honest, once it gets dark, I doubt whether we'll see anybody else at all. So that's it from me. I'm getting back inside now. Coffee and warm drinks, maybe with a bit of whiskey or a cool in. To this new little thing I'm going to do each day, which is uh, Nick's end of day brief. And the idea of, it, of this is to show you where we have been, the route we have taken, I'll break down the number of miles, I'll give you the what three words for uh, each place that we've been to, and I'll give you the miles per gallon. So I'm going to keep looking down at my notes, um, which we have written here. So we started off uh, this morning in Cardiff, and uh, we travelled up to uh, Firkin Point, it, uh, on the edge of Loch Lomond. The what three words for that are here. So you can have those three words. Um, so we travelled a total distance of 429 miles. So a long way. We left home at 2am and we got here around about midday-ish, although we did have a couple of stops. Uh, so my average fuel consumption, bear in mind that the van is uh, three and a half tonnes, four and a half tonnes fully laden. I do travel full of uh, water. Um, so I had 100 litres of water on yesterday. Some people may say it's pointless carrying that water with me. It's an extra 100 kilos. Um, for me, I find personally that the van sits better on the motorway uh, when it's got uh, when it's full of water. And we're wild camping, so it's about availability of topping up. So I was averaging 25, 26 miles per gallon yesterday on the way up. Um, average speed was 52 miles an hour, and I say the actual driving time was eight hours and 13 minutes. That means that the journey up cost me probably the best part of 80 pound in diesel. If there's anything else that you guys are interested in knowing the facts whilst we're going around, drop me a comment. Uh, I will pick them up straight away and I will try and implement that into the next end of day brief. Um, the plan tomorrow, I believe, is to leave Firkin Point and move on somewhere else. I'm not quite sure, but I'll let you know about that uh, tomorrow when we're on the road. Hope you've enjoyed today. Um, it has been rainy, uh, very, very rainy. <coughs> Um, but uh, onward and upward, this is Scotland, and I'll catch you all uh, tomorrow.